My bad, ten dollars. All right, this sign is just hilarious. The Garden Tomb closed on Sunday. Get it? Should be open on Sunday. Here we are at the entrance to the Garden Tomb, which is the main alternative location offered for the site of the tomb of Jesus. Let's check it out. Here's a big cave, and uh, down at the bottom is a possible site for crucifixion. Could also have been at the top. But the main thing this site has going for it is that... See these two partially connected holes in the rock? If you're looking at that from the correct angle, it looks like a big skull. And Jesus was taken to Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. So, not a perfect argument, but you can see why some people argue that this is where Jesus was crucified. Here's a photograph that was taken more than a century ago. And you can see that this still looks like a skull. The garden tomb actually has a garden of olive trees, but those are planted more recently. However, there is a very old wine press here. Grapes would have been placed in here, and then you'd tread them by foot. And that suggests that this may have been sort of garden vineyard. Why is this interesting? Well, the tomb was in the area of a garden. Here are people waiting in line to get to see inside the garden tomb. If you want to go in line... Over here beside the tomb we have some examples of ossuaries. Their bones will be collected after a body has decomposed. So this was all covered until someone bought the property and was digging down through the dirts and then discovered there's actually a tomb here. So here's the tomb and here's what's interesting. There's a little channel there for rolling a stone in front of the tomb. As a Jewish tomb, this would have been much shorter, but it's been chiseled out over the years. So that's the door of the tomb. And then this would be a spot for our body. And notice how there's a little spot down there. That would have been for collecting oil so that you can then pour it over the body again when you visit. This would have been for later times, not for the time of Jesus. This tomb was apparently repurposed later on. And lots of it has been taken over the years for Christians who wanted a piece of the two. Hey, so this is the Garden Tomb, one of the possible locations for the crucifixion and burial of Jesus. And in the background, you hear the Muezzin and the call to prayer. because this is now a predominantly Muslim area. All right, so I've given you the basic 
reasons why some people are convinced that this is the tomb of Jesus and why uh, the site of the crucifixion is nearby. So what's the verdict? Well, there are some problems, namely that when experts come in, the dates don't exactly line up. So this is a tomb. However, this tomb can be dated to 7th to 8th century BC. And that would be fine because tombs can be reused, but the Gospels say that this was a freshly hewn tomb. And so that would need to be accounted for. Uh, some other things, the little channel for a stone to roll in was apparently from later than the time of Jesus. So uh, on the surface, tons of the details line up, but the dates don't exactly match. And uh, when we consider the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, this does go back to an earlier time of identification. The Emperor Constantine, after his conversion, sent his mother Helena to Jerusalem to attempt to find the important holy sites so that there could be uh, churches built. Now you'd think, what does she know? Well, Helena was actually smart. She went to experts. She went to Eusebius of Caesarea, um, the greatest Christian historian of his time, and to the Bishop of Jerusalem, who would have been familiar with the uh, traditions of the church. And the location they came up with uh, is what is now um, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So a uh, couple possibilities. One is that this garden tomb is the actual tomb of Jesus. Uh, another that um, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is, uh, contains the, the tomb of Jesus or that neither one does. And might actually be good that we don't know. Might be good that we don't know. Because if we had 100% certainty I think lots of Christians would be inclined to worship the place rather than the Lord. One thing remains certain. If we ever did identify the tomb of Jesus with 100% certainty, I guarantee that tomb would be empty. All right, check out how a Coke Zero works in Israel. You ever get sick of having the top of your can be dirty? So you're sitting there washing it with your t-shirt. Well, this one comes with a little cover on it. And then you open it up. And... Ah, refreshing. All right, so this is a food court in a mall. And uh, here's a good idea. You finish at the food court. You uh, throw away your garbage, and there's a sink right there, so you can wash up. That makes sense. Why is no one else doing this? Tel Aviv. Hey, what's up? Earlier today we went to the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem. After that we drove to Tel Aviv, which is basically the, the New York City of Israel. We didn't do much else today after we got to the hotel I fell asleep and then didn't realize how didn't realize how tired I was I've only been getting about four hours uh, of sleep a night while I was here because their days are pretty much completely full but when everyone else is going to sleep I'm staying up uh, putting footage onto my laptop then editing the video then posting the video and stuff like that so I ended up having to stay up late to uh, to get those videos out um, anyway, this should be a short video. I can't think of anything we're doing tomorrow that I would want to film. Uh, we're heading out in the evening for an evening flight. But what I think I'm going to do is 
try to go live with a couple of the guys here. Uh, there are a bunch of apologists here with me. And I also have a couple of ex-Special Forces guys here with me. Might try to get them to go live with me to discuss the death of al-Baghdadi. Might be interesting. All right, catch you tomorrow.